Hi, my name is Stephen Whiteman. I am Senior Lecturer in the Art and Architecture of China at the Courtauld Institute of Art, University of London, and author of Where Dragon Veins Meet, The Kangxi Emperor and His Estate at Ruha. Where Dragon Veins Meet explores the early history of Bishu Shandrong, or the mountain estate to escape the heat, the largest of the Qing Imperial Park palaces. Located in modern Chengde Hebei, construction in what was then known as Ruhe began in the first decade of the 18th century under the Kangxi Emperor. The book focuses specifically on Ruhe under Kangxi in order to answer three essential questions. First, how might a study centered on Bishu Shandrong under Kangxi, as distinct from its later development under his grandson Qianlong, help us understand the particular challenges of the Kangxi period? Second, how did the Kangxi court utilize landscape, including not only gardens, but also images, poetry, and the empire itself, for ideological expression? And third, how might bringing these different landscapes into dialogue change our understanding of space and power in China? What results is not just a detailed view of Bishu Shandrong in its first stage of life, but a much broader look at art and architectural production in the Kangxi court, and at early Qing connections across cultures both within the empire and across Eurasia. The first challenge lay in separating the Kangxi period landscape out from Qianlong's much more substantial development later in the 18th century. Using a database developed for the book, we can see how much the park changed between Kangxi, shown in orange and red, and Qianlong in yellow. These maps also help me understand how the park palace was designed and used, how its visitors might have experienced the landscape, and how depictions and descriptions of the park, such as the official Zhang Yushu's 1708 account mapped here, recorded or departed from the physical site. Mapping at the scale of empire also helped me understand the symbolic significance of Ruhe, which was situated at the junction of China, Inner Mongolia, and Manchuria, as well as where the histories of Han and so-called conquest dynasties, such as the Liao and Jin, met. This capacity for Ruhe to resolve inner and outer, so that the Park Palace epitomizes an ideal, unified Qing Empire, introduces a blurring of scale that echoes those of urban gardens in China. In both environments, the small is made to appear great, but instead of jumping between a towering rockery and a mighty peak, as in the left, at Bishu Shandrong, the landscape moves between garden and empire. The second half of the book turns from the physical site to its representations in painting and print to understand how images of Ruhe evoked the originary landscape while operating independently to articulate distinctive aspects of Kangxi's imperial ideology. The primary visual monuments of Kangxi era Ruhe are Lung Mei's view of Ruhe on the left, which captures the site midway through its early development, and imperial poems on Bishu Shandrong on the right, which combine the emperor's poetry and scenic views in a volume intended as a gift from the throne. Though visually and materially quite different, one is nearly two meters tall and painted in rich colors, while the other, all black and white, can be held in the hand, the two share an emphasis on presenting the emperor's subjective point of view to the viewer. View of Ruhe draws on historical Chinese subjects of monumental landscapes and palace paintings, but presents them in a distinctly early modern way, creating a perspectival view of both mountains and valley designed for someone of Kangxi's slightly greater than average height. Thus, when we look up into the valley which climbs above our heads, or down at the foothills and halls in the painting's foreground, we are doing so from the emperor's point of view, both literal as the painting was intended for him, and metaphoric, 
as we look on to his private estate. In the Imperial Poems, we encounter the garden through the much more intimate album format. Here, the Emperor's description of each of 36 scenes precedes an image of the scene itself, which we appreciate through the lens of the Emperor's words and feelings. The book is a printed version of what was originally a painted album for the Emperor's personal enjoyment. Kangxi's presence in perspective is therefore further evoked through the act of reading, which imitates the sociability of viewing the original album. In both these cases, the images and the mode of viewing they invite underlie an equation between the emperor and the landscape that is present in the park palace itself. Whether physical or pictorial, Bi Shu Shanzhuang completes an equation between emperor, territory, and polity that was central to Kangxi's articulation of imperial authority. Moreover, images allow this authority to extend to Europe, particularly to the court of Louis XIV, with whom Kangxi exchanged images of their respective royal estates. From Lung Mei's use of perspective to a copper plate version of the imperial poems, pictorial technologies were central to landscape's role in the global discourse of early modern rulership. As I conclude, I want to take a moment to acknowledge a few of those who supported this book. In particular, Daniel P. Huffman and Carilli White helped make the maps that appear throughout. The wonderful team of editors and designers at University of Washington Press produced a beautiful book. The financial support of the Mellon Foundation, the Australian Academy of the Humanities, the Jiang Jingguo Foundation, CAA, the Metropolitan Center, the Foundation for Landscape Studies, and the Courtauld Institute, among many others, made this publication possible. Finally, my great thanks to all the many colleagues and friends who contributed. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy Where Dragon Veins Meet.